Hello, this is Chief Derek Mallory. This is a recording. Please leave your message after the sound of the signal. Uh, Derek, I'm really very sorry. Uh, it's Geraldine Saxon. Uh, sorry to trouble you, but when I got home from the Whitney house tonight, I found that Raven was not here. And I'm really terribly worried about her. If you do have a chance to call, please do. I'm, uh, I'm going to just wait up until she gets home, at which time, of course, I will leave another message. Thank you. Raven, where in heaven's name are you? Come to bed soon. Spencer, you're back. Yes. Back from the wars, am I limping badly? <laughs> Sounds as if the battle was rough. Well, mostly tiring. I don't think there's a banking institution in Chicago of any kind that I didn't pay a visit to. Without any luck, I got it. None at all. Sky, this key of Jeff Brown's is as mysterious as ever. If this key fits any deposit box in the state, I don't know where it is. It's been a very frustrating experience. Of course, you know about these safety deposit keys. The number on them isn't the number on the box. Of course not. Then anyone finding the key could violate your privacy. Which is what we did. In a way, we did find the key among Jeff Brown's personal possessions. That wasn't the reason the banks turned you away, though, was it? Turn away Skyler Whitney's business manager? They'd have to be out of their minds. No, I had no trouble getting all the cooperation I needed. I spoke to only the top officials. Of course, they were all hoping that I was there to make a sizable deposit. <laughs> I'm sure they were. Your name opened every door, Skylar, but this key didn't open a thing. How did you determine that? Well, some of them checked the numbers on the records that they had, but that doesn't do much good because the key can be duplicated and any number can be put on it. Including 5011. I wish. No, our best bet was to check the names of the depositors. And there was no Skylar Whitney? No, and no Jefferson Brown, of course. Well, he could have used a pseudonym. Whatever he did, Skylar, we are up against an impossible proposition. Any suggestions? I think we should forget the whole thing. No, I won't do that. It might not matter that we know where the box is. There might be nothing of value in it, Skylar. There's got to be. Why else we conceal it? Why go to the trouble? Spencer, we still don't know the extent of this estate, how huge it could be. What would Jeff Brown hide away from the rest of the world? Gems? Diamonds, maybe? Deeds of property, negotiable bonds? Maybe some baby pictures he thought were sentimentally valuable. I don't care what it is. The point is he is still hiding something from me, still laughing at me from the grave. Sky, I think you're making too much of this. But I admit I'm as curious as you are, so I'll just keep looking for the answer, even if I have to go to every bank in the country. Now, what if it isn't in this country? What about a bank in Switzerland? I think you're beginning to see our problem. <laughs> well, you solved worse for me, Spencer. 
Well, I'll keep working on it. By the way, it looks like your party was a success. Yes, I'm sorry you couldn't be here. It was uh, interesting. I'll tell you all about it in the morning and about our uninvited guest. Who was that? The lady who used to live here. If you don't mind, I think I'd like to hear that story right now. <laughs> in that case, I'll have a second nightcap. your head blown on up. Get out of here. Yes, sir. I was just trying to figure out what he was doing. Listen, Sandy, do me a favor. Go downstairs and keep an eye out for Chief Mallory. As soon as he gets here, let us know real fast. You got that? I got it. Okay, go. Well, unless we got our tails covered, we can always say we posted somebody to watch for the Chief. Uh, well, the Chief is definitely not going to be too happy about the two of us coming up here alone without him. Look, we got to take the initiative, Tyler. This guy says he's going to blow up the whole building. I didn't hear that, did you? I heard one of the guys say it. Well, we're just gonna have to find out for ourselves. Lowry! Bill Lowry, this is Detective Damian Tyler. Knock, knock, get his attention. Yes, we got, got his got attention. attention. Lowry, this is Detective Tyler. You said you wanted to see me. Here I am, okay? How are you? It's you, Tyler. Open the door and look. Yeah. I'll open the door, all right, with a cannon. You can't stay in there forever, Lowry. Shut up, Lewis. Who was that? That didn't sound like Tyler. No, that is me. It's Detective Tyler. You have my word on it. Look, look. This is getting us no place. He's right by the door. Let's rush him. Wait, wait, wait. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> If you look to your right, way down there, you see the, the lighted uh, clock tower on the International Building? You see that? You see what time it yeah, is? Yeah, I know, I know. It's very late. Has Nicole gone to bed? Yeah, she's completely exhausted. It was a work day for her, you know. Oh, for you too? Yeah, what? Well, listen, you want some hot chocolate, something like no, that? No, no, Miles. Nothing for me, thanks. You know, I get the feeling that you didn't exactly enjoy that party tonight. Is that a wrong assumption? It was all right. Um, I don't know. It was it was a weird party. All sorts of strains in the atmosphere. I detected a little strain between uh, you and Gavin. You did, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you can see that kind of thing in people's faces after they've had a quarrel. Have you, have you noticed that? No. We didn't really quarrel. We didn't really agree either, though. Wild guess. The subject was. The Republic of Eden. Gavin says I think about it too much. I would guess you're thinking about it right now. I would guess that that was the subject on your mind when I walked out in the terrace. Do you realize that I have never seen this little country where my ancestors were born? Isn't that remarkable? What? Now, wait, do you realize that I have never seen Ireland? My, my great-great-grandfather comes from Ireland. I've never seen Scotland. My great-grandmother comes from Scotland. I have a Swede somewhere in the background. I have never been to Sweden. Okay, Some now French you're guys. making fun of me. No, it isn't that. It's just that I want to make sure you're thinking the right way about this Eden business. 
because it's so easy to get pulled in by the romance of this kind of thing, especially since you think you've got some distant relative who was of royal birth and who performed some heroic deed. But I am related to her, and I must have inherited some of her genes. Well, now, heredity is a very tricky thing. But I can assure you of, of one thing. Heroism is not one of the things that is passed down through the genes. I know. Believe me, I know that. And I don't feel heroic. I mean, when I was being held prisoner, I was scared to death. Well, I didn't mean to say that fear and courage are opposites, either. You know, you're right about the romance, though. I mean, it is romantic, and it's, it's almost like a wonderful Technicolor movie in my mind. Starring Jodie Travis. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Although Marie Bonaventure, I mean, when her movie ended, she didn't take up her makeup and her costume, did she? I mean, she was dead. Yes, she was. Miles, I know you told me you don't believe in prophecies. Oh, now look, I am a doctor, you know. I'm a man of science. No one's going to tell me that I can uh, predict the course of a patient's illness by uh, looking into the leaves of a teacup or gazing into uh, a crystal ball. Okay, but don't you believe that there are certain people who are gifted? I believe that prophecies were made mostly to make people feel better, better about the future, or to frighten them into better behavior than present. Okay, just the same then. There is the Eden prophecy that Marie Bonaventure's descendant would come back and help free the people from tyrants. I've heard the prophecy. Okay. But if I don't come forth, then that automatically makes the prophecy false, Jody, doesn't it? you don't have any obligation to make it come true. But just the same, it's... Just the same, it's what? Uh, tomorrow I'm going to find out more about this medieval pageant. What medieval pageant? Oh, I didn't tell you about that, did I? No, you didn't. Well, there's going to be a celebration. The 300th birthday of Eden. And, and there's going to be this celebration. And it's going to be held in right outside of Monticello. Anyway, I don't see why there's any reason I shouldn't go there. And Yeah, in fact, I think I will. Good night, Miles. <sighs> It must have been the champagne, and I just came up here to rest for a I little. I understand. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll leave. No, oh, don't go yet. I'm glad you're here. You are? I've been wanting to speak to you all evening, to tell you how lovely you looked, how happy I was that you came to the party. But you didn't even invite me. I had to come with someone you did invite. I was surprised to see you, of course, but then I was very glad. I don't believe you. How could I have invited you? You were so angry with me the last time we met. I thought you'd never want to see me again. I was angry with you. I still am. In that case, I have nothing to lose. What do you mean? By making you even angrier. Like this. What's going on here? What are you doing in my bed? Get out of here. Spencer! You heard me, I said get out! Now! Spencer, would you see to it that Miss Alexander gets home safely? Of course. Oh, 
thanks, Mom, but you didn't have to wait up for me. Uh, well, I had to find out how the big party went, didn't I? As a matter of fact, it must have been quite a bash, considering the hour. Yeah, well, we left a little bit after midnight, but I've been with Jody at the cabin office. Well, well how was it? I mean, it must have been quite something. Last time you were at the old Whitney mansion, as far as I remember, you and Jody went there as uh, burglars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But it was a different Whitney. You know, this guy even has the same manners as the old one. Same sort of arrogant air about him. No, oh, the imposter probably borrowed those, too. Yeah, I thought of that. But this is the original one. I'm not so sure I like it. The weird thing is seeing Gunther there. Yeah, it must have been peculiar. Seeing somebody you were supposed to have murdered. How'd Jody react? Jody? Jody's mind is somewhere else these days. I don't think she notices much around her. You mean with the kidnapping and all that stuff? Especially all that stuff. Half the time she's over the rainbow in Eden. Yeah, I've noticed she's been a little uh, absent-minded lately. Hey, what's this? I mean, I know you're taking a week off. I didn't know you were traveling. They are stars. I'm shipping them to New York tomorrow. Really? Well, what's going on? Is, is she going to live in New York permanently? Yeah, something like that. I see. Uh, well... Look, uh, Gavin. Star and I are uh, getting divorced. I'm really sorry to hear that, Calvin. <laughs> yeah, well, considering all that's happened, it can't be that much of a surprise. No, not completely. But I didn't know things were that serious. <sighs> Gavin, I just don't understand. I mean... Just a short time ago, I thought that a divorce would just solve all of my problems. Because of Dee Dee. Yeah. And now, here's the solution right in my hands. My wife doesn't want to be my wife anymore. And Dee Dee doesn't want any part of me. And here I sit with a week with nothing else to do but just think about it. Chief, it's my responsibility. The guy said he was either going to blow himself up or blow up the whole building. I had to do something. What's the matter? You couldn't talk him out of there? Well, I hardly got a chance. I still think we should rush him, Chief. He's obviously stalling for time. Look, just give me another break at it. All right, look, you try once more. If you can't talk him out of there, I got two guys on the roof going to come through the window, and then we're going to have to break that door down. Lowry! This is Damian Tyler again. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. But I still don't know if it's you, Tyler. Look, Lowry, I can prove who I am. You remember the last time I busted you at the restaurant? I know what you were eating. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. It was Clams Casino, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Clams Casino. My favorite. And... And you let me finish them. Right. Well, never let a good dish go to waste, I always say. Lowry, if you come out of there, I promise I'm going to have a, a plate of Clams Casino sent down to the station house right away. You have my word on that. Wait a minute! Don't shoot! I'm going to check you out. This is with marinara sauce, Perlian. Huh? Right? Hello. Geraldine, it's Derek Mallory. Thank heavens. Geraldine, I got your message. Is Raven still not home yet? No, she isn't, and I'm more worried about her than ever. It's almost three o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to leave the party and leave her there like that, but I, I just couldn't be helped. Well, my dear, it isn't your fault. If it's anyone's, it's mine. I should have kept track of that woman. Derek... She was drinking tonight, too. I suppose you were aware of that. Oh, she sure was drinking. But listen, I, I'm sure somebody there gave her a ride back. Well, I certainly hope so. I, I hope she doesn't decide to... Oh, wait, here she is. Uh, thank you, dear. Good night. Raven. Don't Evan, start Raven. yelling at me now. I've heard enough yelling for one night. Hello, Mrs. Saxon. Spencer. I was asked to escort Mrs. Alexander home. Well, thank you very much. What are you thanking him for? If you'll excuse me, I'll say it. Wait a minute, Spencer. I have a message for your boss. You tell him that he hasn't heard the last of me yet. 
And you also tell him that someday he's going to be begging for me to stay.